Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. So today is the day. Today is the day we're going to finish up Skylab here. We're going to get it up in, up in the air. We're going to get it all finished. We're going to take care of the, the furnishings in here, get uh, our uh, station set up. So we're going to have like the armory station, refinery station, uh, printers and whatnot. We're going to get the mine and the water pump set up. I've been thinking of think of an idea for the, the locking mechanism I'm going to have used to use for it uh, uh it's going to be raised and lowered using air blades even though this whole thing is going to be flying i do have an idea for this that should technically work uh, but i also want to make some sort of locking device that holds it in place just so when we're traveling that it doesn't go up and down and move out of the out of the way and i'm going to be using what i'm going to refer to as a hover pad spring and you know, like I said, I've been doing a lot of work with the hover pads. I've been learning things as I go along and discovering new ways of doing things to make it more efficient and more reliable. Uh, we also got to take care of the ramp over here, and I think we might actually take care of this site first, just because because this is uh, another interesting component. So what I need to do, uh, I have thought about this. What, what am I? do is put one air blade in this section here, another one here, and then another one in here, and these are large air blades. And then I'm going to put that little ramp extension again back on the end. Uh, what I'm going to do, what I'm thinking about doing is having almost like a goddamn auto saves. You always get me every time. Uh, having like a almost like a T-section. So let's say five conveyors across and then maybe two up with a couple of just small air blades on. So those air blades, when they're lifting up, are actually going to fold the ramp up. So uh, when I hit a button, this air blade here unpowers. So it's only this one here that's powered. So it will drop down. And the small air blades will unpower, so that ramp will drop down. But in theory, since uh, the blocks are heavier, that should stay downwards. I might actually just you end up using uh, the short inner wall, which I've noticed they've actually changed the weight on that. I think that used to be like 600, but even then, yeah, it used to be like 600, but they changed the weight on. So we might have to find something a little bit heavier to put down here. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and take care of this. Now, what would be the best way to do this one? My only attachment point is over here. Got that container there, and I got that choppiness. I want to. Uh, I was actually going to do something before I try st start recording. I think what it could be is could have to do with my uh, terrain texture quality. I do have a pretty good video card, but it's not exactly the best optimized game. So let me try this, and I'll be right back. It could also be the Unity version, uh, but or it could be my mouse too. Who knows? But we'll see how it goes. Actually, it's not my mouse because I know it's when I was, especially when I'm flying the the block there. And it could be, you know, I mean, it's just trying to load up the high resolution textures as I'm going along. But I'm thinking about this now. I'm trying to figure out what my main drive blades are going to be. The, these ones here above the doors will not because uh, they're rotated 90 degrees over there. Uh, these ones here could, but it might push up too much. So, I might, I can always figure it on the go, get them all going, whatever, whatever way they can. So, I'm going to have the air blade going this way then. So, I was actually thinking about it, what I can do. Get, get rid of these two railings, because one's a four, one's a three. We'll switch over to two threes. Uh, where is the railing here? Uh, I definitely know it's uh, much smoother now. What way was I going on this? It was going on the inside. And I think I did that just to avoid any possible clipping. Okay, and we'll take that out. It's actually running so smooth, I don't even know if I'm actually wondering if I'm recording or not. Alright, and there, and there. And then we'll go ahead and fill them in. Get my handy dandy gray. 
And then what I'm going to do with this one, I think, might just double up all the way, put a T at the top, and have the air blade on about the same height as this one. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this. That one put in. Uh, I did. I had to put, uh, put connections down at this end here because I realized that when this one lifts up, it's going to be lifting up on only on this side, so it's going to be technically lifting this side and not this side, causing an issue because there's a hinge here. But since I connect it over here and actually have it connected to this block, which is connected to the rest of this, it's basically one giant block. It should lift evenly, but that's that's just theory. But it should work out. So now to get onto this section here, of course, it's raining, it's getting dark, and all that stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna first gonna do is I'm gonna place this ramp back on. So we're gonna go ahead back in here. We're gonna grab a hinge. Right there. And it's dark. It's dark. I gotta fix this. Okay. I had to extend the Wi-Fi too. I realized that was out of materials down here. So we'll go down here with the ramp back in. And I was using the post. I call it a post. Everybody calls it a post. It's actually a short inner wall. Not enough resources. What do you mean, not enough resources? Just out of range. Really? Alright, I'll have to work on this side only then. Right, go ahead and put the glass back in. Uh, yeah, this post has a very strange hitbox. Alright, now if you don't know, these are actually 6x7. As you can see, it doesn't quite cover the post. If I go that way, it does. And that's why I had the post in the middle. Oh, really? Okay. I'll we'll have to go up here then. Yeah, it's fine. So we're going to do that. Uh, let me fill this in and then. So now, what I'm going to do. Actually, I should plant this just to safety purposes. And of course, I'm going to have the frame planted. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the perfect time for autosave. Impeccable timing. Uh, yes. So I'm going to take two of these. And I know I'm not going to reach it over here. So I'll just give you the rough idea. I'll have to extend that. get the So I can actually do this. Let's give you a rotating plate there. A rotating plate on the other side. I want to see if I can actually... Uh, this building system sometimes... Let you get away with some interesting th stuff sometimes. Come on, where is it? Yeah. Sometimes it'll let you do it. But now that we can actually move the blocks out, I can actually build it from way back here. One more, one more. There we go. So basically that idea, and then uh, probably we'll use the post with the T-section coming up with some air blades, and uh, I'll do that, get the air blades on this section, I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, so this is this is my idea here, and this is, theoretically should work. Uh, I was thinking of uh, turning all four air blades off, but what I might do is I might just turn the bottom ones off, just to reduce the amount of lift, to actually allow it to drop down. This one here will keep the lift, to at least keep it right side up, last thing you want it. One is this thing flipping over for no apparent reason. Uh, and then for these ones here, I just found a spot. Ah, that's nice and, you know, big gaping holes. You had a break from the ring. But, yeah, I uh, just basically put posts up right where they would be. Uh, like I said, these are gonna, this one's going to be shut, turned on and off. This one is going to be left on all the time. And this is our loading ramp. Uh, I left this open here because that will stick in this this way but I don't know how far yet so uh, we'll leave that be so that is this whole side here I think all that's really left to do is work on the miners and get out of the conveyors mess of conveyors unbelievable uh, let me deal with this rain that's better the problem with the rain in this world it's not always just rain, it's usually a storm, and a nasty storm too. 
And of course, there's an autosave just in time because I just started recording. Alright, so let's have a look what we got here. Let's get up on the, our old perch up top here. Oh. Okay, I'm good. So yeah, now I'm going to work on the, the miners here. Or the water pump and the miners at this end. I have thought about this area here, and I think this just might be vehicle storage. Uh, probably... I think, actually, maybe I'll do that. See if I can get three air blades Nutrition in here. Level dropping. Okay, hang on, hang on. Good hydration secured. My high tech suit is telling me I need to eat. Nah, isn't technology great? Uh, what I could do is put one in, one in the front, two corners, and then one in the back here. And of course, I'll have them up a little bit higher, so we'll be able to get a small. I'll try to get a small little flyer made for my own purposes and. Maybe even modify the buggy a little bit and go from there. Uh, another one I was thinking about doing, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I was just putting a little bit of something on here. If I get the right hot bar, that is. I was actually thinking about doing this, and I didn't actually do it before. It has, it serves absolutely no purpose other than looks. Why not, right? Uh, of course, I ran out of battery. It gives a little bit more, you know, peace of mind. Uh, it's not going to fall apart on you, even though we all know that that won't happen in this game. Not yet, anyways. So, yeah, I'm going to... I guess we're going to skip the day here pretty quick. And we'll start working on uh, these ones here. I know I can get two more solar panels on here. We might be able to go a little go a little bit longer just because uh, I do have them hot bar hot barred somewhere. And we'll just do this like that. Uh, probably a little more. I'm not a hundred percent sure what the power usage on this thing is going to be. I know it's going to be quite high. Uh, as far as the the air blades on this side here, like large air blades, that actually brings up a good question here. Uh, I have to do some testing to see if solar panels will actually absorb light through an air blade. If an air blade blocks the rain. Because the air blade is going to be covering these nine here, plus two more. One on either side. So I don't know how that's, that's going to work. Uh, if that's the case, I'm sure I can find somewhere to stick a few more solar panels if we need it. But yeah, let me uh, let me get something figured out here. All right, so this is what I did. I uh, took the inner inner row out and I put it on the outside, extended it out further out. So now I have four. There's 80 solar panels generating 250 apiece, so we're generating 20,000 watts. It should be more than enough to power power this place. Uh, we do have the backup generators over there if we ever need to, you know, pump out 24 kilowatts of power in our goddamn hurry. We got it right. So yeah, uh, the reason why I did this is because um, this this gap here is nine wide. One more is 11, which is actually the same width of the air blades in the direction that we need, which is this way. So then I have one more spot for. Uh, my conveyors. No, it doesn't need to be a conveyor. It's going to be a conveyor, anyways. Uh, now for placement, we're going 13 this way. That's four, five. Did I want to have one here? I think I do. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here. Let's turn that on. So one, two, three, four. I should be counting the ceiling tiles. So that's that'd be the center there. So I'll put it there. Put the first one there. Then the second one. It's probably going to go...
put it right here. Just because, uh, since it is stormy, I'm going to do this off camera and I'll bring you back when I have something to show for myself. Okay, I am back and it's actually a couple of days later for me actual in real time. Uh, as you can see, things are finished. Yes, I actually went ahead and got everything done. Everything is wired, configured, uh, somewhat tested except for flying this thing. Uh, I'll give you a tour of everything in a minute. There's one thing I got to show you, uh, one thing I got to do over at this end. It's going to be basically what I've done down here and I'll show you that in a minute. But what I've, all I really have left to do is... I started thinking about this one too. Uh, that's the best thing about now rushing into things is you tend to think about things a little more. And one of the things I was worried about is when we're ascending and descending that this ramp might actually drop down on its own. Uh, just because we're using the air blades and these smaller air blades should have more uh, faster response time as far as accelerate, ascending and descending. As the large guys up here and yes the beacon is up and running we'll go we'll check that out in a minute uh, so what I need to do is I actually need to lift this up and build a locking mechanism for it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the railing out here and I already I already know what I'm gonna do for this so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna call it a spring-loaded mechanism I, I might even trademark that just because uh, just because it's BCP right you never know I'm sure I'm not the only person that thought about this excuse me a second got to sip that coffee before it gets cold right so what I need to do uh, as you can see I have the rotating plates here I also didn't realize this when I actually built this section here or when I rebuilt it that I didn't have a post here I had six blocks because I actually had it going long ways this way just to keep the ramp the same width just in case I had driving right you never know so what I need to do is um, these are actually wired at the moment so I got to disconnect these uh, the way I plan on doing this is the top four, two are going to be powered at all times the, the main flights powered and I do have the, the air blades isolated uh, I had to increase the power supply just a little bit just to get this thing actually self-sustained at night um, so whenever uh, yeah so the top ones are powered at all times the bottom ones are powered by that switch over there which is basically uh, a drop switch that was actually supposed to be wired up to this one too. Hang on a second here. There you go. So then basically when you unpower this switch, it's going to cut that air blade and cut those two air blades. So the ramp should technically drop down but stay upright sort of because the, the upper air blades will still be powered. And then this one unpower and the whole ramp should actually technically drop down. Uh, but as I said, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this doesn't fold out when I don't want it to. So I got to make a lock for it. So now, like I said, I got to I gotta lift it up. So the way I'm going to do that is uh, let's push the switchboard down somewhere. Let's, uh, let's take the railing out because I'm going to need some space for this. Okay. I'm going to put that down here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect those get this wired up and put a cockpit down and I'll bring you back okay I got them bypassed mm. so I had to make sure I was actually recording sometimes I hit the wrong key which is better than the other program I was trying to use Loyola where it was the same key to start and stop recording so <laughs> unless you're actually looking at the program I didn't know if you're actually recording or not yeah okay so anyways I'm just gonna stick a cockpit down does it doesn't, doesn't really matter which way I'm facing just do it right, right. Okay, I'll fill that in. So now I gotta go in here and I'm actually gonna hover up on the air blades and that's just to uh, uh, lift up some weight because I actually want this to go up. Sorry, I was looking for the proper key. All right, unlock that. We'll unlock this. Gonna back up. Actually, I'm gonna unplant this first. Okay. It's not gonna go anywhere because that hinge is still locked. Uh, I do realize this could cause issues reloading the, the game because of occasional clipping that we all are aware of. So that goes up like that. And that's as high as it's going to go, is it? Yeah. Yeah, these uh, hinges don't have a, a great range of movement. So we're basically limited to there. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about having like a, a claw come out to 
to deal with that but that's not the case but i just want to just check one thing while we're here we'll disconnect that anyways disconnect that and that sort of worked that was the idea the plan but clearly those posts are not heavy enough actually i'll just have to add more weight and of course it's raining but anyways i wanted to check that out so let me get everything back to where it was and i'll bring it back and we'll see if this thing will actually get airborne okay i got it all back together and uh you know, i'll have to think of something else for that uh it comes down to it might even just take it off just try to avoid the edge if we're not going to be going over there i actually forgot to put those railings back in i'm gonna do that quickly uh but but, as you can see, I did a few other things too, like I tried getting some little lights around, I put them on the containers there, I put them on the strip of batteries I have going around. I the I basically had to double up the batteries that we had that I have in the power supply room, uh, just because uh, once nighttime came around, there was actually, well, come on, snap, there we go, yeah, that should be good there. Uh, I did actually have enough power to keep itself sustained once the sun went down, oh, that was the wrong button, haha. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what I did. I actually did a test, and I it was getting getting late, so I slept until oops, I slept until uh, it got dark. Sure enough, the beacon started flickering and it ran out of power. And I just went in. I I think I only had to add six more batteries to actually get this thing live and alive and well. And that's with the air blades running, all the equipment, the beacon all the hover pads that i've got on here the lights and everything so it is self-sustaining uh, it will not charge in the sun with the air blades running if you turn the air blades off then it will actually run excuse me sorry charge uh but that's where the generators come in and these generators will produce 24 24 000 watts so if you're in a buying a charge up you can see you got all the extra batteries here they are all heavily connected wired up and ready to go uh, there is no fuel in these because we haven't made any fuel but it's definitely a good way to get off the ground if you're in a jam right we do have a water pump here so for the time being if you need to dig a hole in the ground drop the, the pump down and grab some water there you go but let's go start with uh, I haven't really done much over here all I did is uh, hook up the lights in there and that's basically stayed the same uh, go up front here I don't remember if I actually Point uh, showed this. I think I did this after the last clip. But I put the three air blades up in here. Uh, only the two front ones here actually controlled. This one was sideways for some reason. But there's enough room here to park a rover. And if you build a small enough flyer, you should be able to fly it into the gap and land it here. And then we'll go over to the the pumps and the miners. Oh, excuse me. I got to deal with my vitals here. Been working too hard. You not eating well enough. Anyway, we we'll go over here, and this is where the the fun stuff begins. And it was a it was a bit of a tease one to to work out. So I've got the solar panels here. I had to cut the solar panels off just to make sure everything got connected. And yes, everything you see here, every conveyor pipe, except for yeah, I think every single conveyor pipe is technically connected. It is uh. Generating about half a second of container leg, which isn't too bad, but if you start building onto it, just be aware of that. So anyways, this is the, 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 the mining station over here, the water station's over there, the exact same setup. Uh, we've got three switches here. Uh, the, red, the red switch actually controls power to the miners themselves. Uh, this switch here controls the locking mechanism, and I'll demonstrate this here. You turn it off and it opens up the gate, and that just allows the the arm to drop down and go down to where it wants is and the reason why I have it locked like this is just to keep it in place when we're traveling around so it's not bobbing up and down and what have you uh, this switch blade this switch here controls those four air blades there and that's just basically keeping it supported uh, I had to make sure I had enough air blades to actually lift the two miners and the conveyor pipes and all that stuff and that should be enough I'm hoping we might have to stick another one on top there. Uh, again, the top one stays powered to keep it upright as it goes up and down. Uh, so to call it, back, call it back up, you just hit that switch. You might have to get into a cockpit and hover up a little bit. And yeah, then that is it. So the red switch powers the pumps. Uh, brown for the, the miners controls the, 
lower raising and lowering of the device and the gray is the gate I have the same setup over here for the water pumps exact same setup uh, except for you got blue to drop the air blades down or drop the pump uh, minor uh, pumps down got gray for another gate over here which works most of the time it does stick a little bit it is fairly close to the ground I just have to dig a bit of a hole to dig this out or to build it and we will have to dig this out to begin with and then of course red actually controls uh, the water pumps and that is that uh, everything else is basically set up uh, I do have a main flight control over here I'll turn the build vision off to get a little more performance I've got a blue switch over here this actually controls the air blades and there you go the gate lifted over there lifted up and that is that so everything is situated like this so if you're running low on power and you don't have any deuterium you can always just land it somewhere safe and shut it off and it will generate power over time as you can see it no it's not generate not charging now because it has a full charge because it's been sitting here powered off the whole time but anyways, let's get in here and I'll show you what I got set up. And I tried to get basically everything set up, including an autosave. I don't know how I managed to do that. Uh, so we got our station set here. I got the, well, what I did first is I built sort of like a, a, a railing cage barrier around the beacon, just for the sort of aesthetic purposes, put a couple of solar beacons up for lights, try to save some power whenever we can. Uh, two, two stacks of storage here, five, containers on each side as you can see oh, just a little bit of lag it's not nothing terrible we got two printers here which have their own dedicated output box as you can see here I know I didn't have to open it uh, so basically the miners are just gonna be set up so they're not outputting two containers they're just gonna retain what they have you set the mine the printer to print what you want uh, if the printer inventory fills up it's gonna go into this box and this box well, this box first until this fills up and then you know, it's going to go wherever the hell it wants from there it'll probably end up in here or in the, the refinery or whatnot uh, same thing on the second printer here I got the same sort of setup got its own overflow container I set up a replicator to the whole system so we can build on the go and then over here we got our med bay and comp, uh, food and drink machine again all hooked up to the conveyor I set up the radar here I was thinking about setting that up in a different corner but and I wanted to try to sort of have it like right behind the pilot seat. Oh wait, pilot seat's over here. And that reminds me I actually have that in the wrong spot. But anyways, it's over there. And then a few other things, put a small little greenhouse in here, try to get some plants in. Stasis chamber over here and some lockers. You know, it's trying to go for a bedroom look, but you know, it's what we have, right? And other than that, that is that is everything. Right now we are flight ready. Flight worthy is a whole other story, but yeah, and I put a terminal here just for the sake of it. Um, as far as the wiring goes, uh, you can see the colors here. The reds are all the main powers. The the lights are constantly powered. They're not. Sh they don't turn off at all. Um, there is a main switch in here for all the equipment. Uh, if you, if I can get to the door first. Yeah. If you look at the top of the beacon there, there's actually a switch there. That is the main switch to control all the equipment in this room. That's not the button I wanted. Good thing I didn't hit the wrong button. And that's like everything. That's the printers, the beacon, the, the, the scanner, the stasis chamber. Everything comes off of this one switch in this room. So it's sort of like a unified location at the same time too. The beacon gives sort of like an effect. It's almost like it's powering the base, right? And yeah, was there anything else? I do not think so. I think all that's left to do is really try to fly this thing. Now the question is, how do I do this? Do I unlock the hinges first and then drop it, or do I drop it first and then unlock the hinges? That's uh, a tricky one. One thing I do know I have to do, though, before I do anything, is that post has to come up. But I can't take it out while it's here. I probably could because I got the hinges in place, but just for safety measure, just because I don't want 200 tons dropping on me, again, I'm going to plant it in this corner. Now, if you're new to the building system in this game, uh, it's centralized grids. That's not what I wanted. Come on, get out of there. Yes. If I have it planted here, it's connected to the ground. If I want to replant it somewhere else, as long as I'm still on the grid, I touch that block and touch the ground, I can remove that block and have absolutely no issues. 
if I can get in here. Not a lot of space to work under here. It's a lot more flatter in the desert when I built this thing. Uh, but yeah, there will have to be a little bit of digging out. Fortunately, the the the, the destruction mode on the multi tool seems to be a lot more aggressive, so we sh I shouldn't have to worry about any loose loose things. Uh, okay, I probably should save, but hold my breath. And I'm alive. Good. I know my game. All right. Let's get out of here. Uh, that's the only thing you have to deal with is buzzing those hover pads. So let me do a quick save here, and then uh, we'll do a quick save and bring the sun up, and then we'll take it for another spin. You technically shouldn't be powered, but whatever. That's fine. I'll be right back. Okay, saves have been complete. Uh, I made sure to set the miners and the water pumps to disable output to containers. And now the question is, what's going to happen? First of all, I'm going to make sure that the miners are dug out of the ground. Make sure there's nothing actually still attached. Uh, there's going to be a big gaping hole where this thing was, but whatever, we can always pave it in later. Right, just like we always do. I saw something move, that scared me. <laughs> Aha, that's what it was. That was the miners freeing up so they were actually stuck on the ground. Uh, the hover pad, we'll check that. So I know that's pretty close to the ground too. I'll have to do the back, same with the back side. Okay, that's fine. And then we just gotta do the miners, dig out the greenhouse, and I think we'll be ready. Yeah, the water pumps are in there quite a bit. Yeah, didn't really have the best of place to build this thing, but it's here. Not bad considering the fact that I built this thing in the desert where it was just basically flat. Alright, okay, that dropped perfect, and the battery ran out just in time. So that is free, okay, and uh, that side should be free. This side is not, I'm going to get out of the hole before I do that. It's like the old scenario, a uh, guy working on his car, kicking on the jack, car comes down, simple. Alright, why am I not getting my, uh... okay, there we go. Just want to make sure it's all free. Okay, so now, now the question. Now we begin. Uh, smart thing to do because I know the hinges do have some sort of limit to what they can hold in their locked position. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna disconnect the main section last. Okay, that comes down. Uh, let's see if I can get. I'm not gonna go in there. I'm not gonna stand underneath this thing while I do that. I've died already once to this thing. Uh, speaking of dying to this thing, I'm going to point one safety concern out, and I'll make sure to put this up in the workshop when I blueprint this. Don't stand here. This is a pinch point. It's instant death if you get stuck in here. Uh, just, just so you know. <laughs> but it, it, usually when I build something, it results in a couple of fatalities. Usually my own, but you got to worry about public safety first, right? Okay, so that's out, that's out. We'll go and grab these two. Uh, you saw that move. Uh, okay, I hope you're still connected. Damn it. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I was worried about these connections not staying solid and I crashed the game. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was a concern of mine. Uh, one of the things I was worried about was uh, the flexibility of the joint and uh, do a quick, hang on. Gotta make sure I'm recording. Okay, those are free. Good. But yeah, I gotta make sure that the conveyor system is properly connected. Uh, because if it keeps connecting and disconnecting, we could experience some serious lag, which could be an issue. And I'm trying to think about, or even game crashing. And what's happening, I think, is this came disconnected. It's probably because I opened, had the container open when I attempted it. Let's try this again. Let me uh, get you to the point of actually getting it on the ground. 
Okay, I am ready. I haven't crashed yet. Uh, that one conveyor connector isn't connecting. It could be just because it's possibly sitting on the line and causing the force out of the way. Uh, I don't know if you're picking it up in the video, but I am getting some lag. This is the last post. I had to do a fair amount of digging around the greenhouses, but here we go. Oh my god. Mind you, I haven't locked it, unlocked anything yet. Alright. Now for the fun. Oh my god, how many times am I going to die in this one? There should be connect. Well, I don't think it really matters if these ones are connected. I don't know why I had the conveyor connector there to begin with. But let's. Let's free the beast. I know how dangerous this is and how terrible this is going to be flying. But hey, gotta, someone's got to test the limits, right? Now, I want to point out I am well aware of how much my computer's going to have to work to deal with this. Um, I am dealing with multiple connected grids that are going to be moving completely independently from each other on completely different axes, at different speeds, at different rotations, and it's not going to be a pleasant sight. Uh, uh, I'm starting to realize I'm going to be having some serious frame rates here. Uh, I did go ahead and set basically all my settings to the lowest, so should be okay. So far, it's not a problem. I'm starting to worry about these, these here. Oh, jeez. Guess we should get that off the roof, huh? Don't need that anymore. Yes, I've had to extend this a couple of times. I've asked to get the. Well, they did actually increase the range of these, but it'd be nice if they had a like a powered option on them where you can get a longer range. But where they go, we don't really know. We're just hoping they stay with it. And uh, June brings us some really good news. Okay, almost done. I do have my mover tool on me too so I can just move the container because there's a lot of stuff in there and I really don't want to be going through it and manually pulling everything out. And that's the only problem with the mover tool is I actually have to take everything off before I actually move this. So uh, I'll save you the hassle, I'll get this out of the way, then we'll, we'll bring down the last part. Okay, all done. Just move the container out of the way and let's drop that there. And now for the final post. Actually, is that the final post? No, it's not. I still have the greenhouse I gotta drop down. And the miners. But we'll do that on camera just in case the inevitable. Okay, that's actually good. Oh, yes, that's right. We actually gotta unlock everything. That is right. So, unlock you. I felt the lag on that one. And you. Uh oh. You're still stuck in the ground, aren't you? You are. Where? I hope I didn't miss a piece of dirt somewhere. Hopefully it's just like right in this corner. I had the same problem when I was trying to fly the old lab. Fortunately, I was able to blueprint it and re uh, reacquire it, but in this situation... <laughs> Uh, reboot printing this ain't gonna be the easiest thing in the world. Okay, there's a piece of dirt somewhere. No idea where it is. It's gonna be here somewhere. I've been using the right click the whole time, so should be freed up. I just don't know where it is. Uh, it looks like it might be in a conveyor somewhere. I might have to take a few parts out. Yeah, because the this whole section here was under <laughs> under dirt. And I'm wondering if maybe like even the ceiling tile, it just happens to be something in there. Well, let me figure this out off camera. Okay, I found out which one it was. Uh, all I did is I started taking this apart after I had saved it, and then just went by whichever block moved. I believe it was this one. All right, not which block moved, but what caused it to move? 
There we go. What was that one? Mo. Oh. Before I put it back in, where is that piece of dirt? There's gonna be a little chunk of something in here. And I don't see it anywhere. All right, well, that should be good. Uh, at least I know which tile to take out if we have to come back in here. Okay, and... I was having uh, some issues with the pump here, too. Uh, the hinges were tweaking out a little bit. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of dropped down. That's not technically broken. It's just how it is. And I'm sliding, yay. Alright, so that is free, technically. That's unlocked, unlocked. Alright, we'll unlock you. Unlock. We'll unlock you first. You know, you can tell it wants to crash again. There's that. And that. So I believe all it's left to do, or did I already pull this one out? I think I did. Okay, well, it's now or never. Flight mode on. Okay, interesting. Yes, we're dealing with weight balances here. Okay, those are all on. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of figured something like this was going to happen. But you know me, I'll do it anyways. Alright, let's hop in. Let's get into third person. We're going to zoom out as far as I possibly can. There's actually quite a ways. <laughs> so now let's see what happens. Oh, it actually flies. Not the greatest thing in the world, but it works. It's flying on its own. I'm not touching the controls, it's doing this. That's just too funny. Now the question is, can we walk around? This is why I did this. To be able to have a base up in the sky and actually be able to look down to the ground. It flew. Not the greatest, not the most majestic flight, but it does technically work. Uh, let's see what we can do with this. Let's see if this thing will actually fly. Uh, makes me wonder if I can actually get my rover up here now. I want to check something here quickly. Did I power those air blades? Yes. Uh, Oh, I didn't power the top ones. Uh, uh, where is that power connection? Let's go down here. Oh, this is laggy. Very laggy. Alright, just for reference for you, if you decide to download this, uh, anything red underneath here is main power. Anything gray is the flight system. I do have... Uh, every, it is connected through that blue switch. That blue switch connects to that switchboard and that switchboard there. Uh, just so you know, because there is no schematic diagrams pointing out where all the wires are going and what's connected to where and whatnot. And this thing is rotating. Or is it just the planet? I do not know. So anyways, I power these. And that. That is supposed to lift that up. Apparently it's not enough, though. Anyway, let's, uh, let's take this for a spin, shall we? Maybe we'll see if we can pick up the rover. I'll be damned, it's actually flying. At a very laggy and slow rate. It's awesome. I want to see if this mining system actually works now. Let's see if we can get over this pond and drop the water pump down and see what happens. Uh, 
All right, water pump is in the back. All right, we should have plenty of room to land down this lake. And, whoa, bucking bronco. And, uh, since it's getting dark, let's actually let's take a quick nap in our new Skylab. See, I kind of figured this would happen, that this section was going to be heavier than the rest and was going to do this. And, I think I forgot to unlock a hinge here. No, I didn't. It's weird how this one's not lifting up. Oh, good, the air blade stopped them from lifting up too high. All right, let's, uh, let's take a nap. Where's my sleeping quarters? There it is. Heavy duty power. I have renamed uh, the station chamber two to Skylab, just in case something does happen and you need to get back to it. It has been renamed Lag Spike as we come out of time secure. warp. It's working, we're moving, I have absolutely no idea why we're moving or where we're moving to, but someone's flying and it's not me. Okay, uh, let's go to up front here. That's not the front, up front's over here. Yeah, not, like I said, not the, the best frame rate, but you know, again, it was expected. I can already tell now having a... Trying to park a rover on here won't be the greatest idea unless you backed it up right to the railing. All right, so where is this pond? Let's do this and see how well this responds when I descend. I don't know if that's a frame rate issue that's causing the air blades to do that or or what, but yeah, it's not the greatest. So let's see what happens when we go down. Now it is recommended if you wish to drop the miners or the the water pumps that you're not too high off the ground because they only have a certain extent of reach on them. Something like 10 meters should be good. All right, let's get out. That's such a weird feeling. Get out to watch the whole thing just bounce around like that. All right, in theory, this should work. But when does things like that ever work for me? All right, so let's remove the remove the clamp. And of course, it doesn't want to actually pull out now. Did I lock it? No, I didn't. Uh, Oh wow, I thought that was actually affecting the, the hover height. Interesting. Let's turn that back on. What is going on here? I didn't lock it. I know that. Or maybe I did. I think I did. Or maybe not. I think it's jammed because of the miner. Oh, speaking of miner, or water pump. That's unlocked. That's unlocked. And that caused a disturbance in the space time continuum. Okay, is that actually going to open now? No, it's not. Why? There we go. And it looks like it's actually in there. Oh, they're in there. Uh, oh, yeah, I gotta turn them on. I blame my spacebar on that. Uh, something up with this wireless keyboard and mouse. You know, at first I thought it was the mouse that was dying, but I have issues with the keyboard too, and I think it's. Okay. And I think it's uh, maybe something to do with the transmitter. Maybe it's just getting old. Alright, so those are actually getting water, so this is actually working. Surprise, surprise. Now the question is, will it actually come back up? So if I go in, uh, we'll shut the pump off. I'll turn the air blades back on. Comes back up. And then we lock it in place. Nope. Needs more lift. Well, maybe we can 
get the bounce of the place. Close enough. All right, yeah, that that was somewhat successful. I probably could have probably could have redesigned that block a little bit. Maybe let's actually do that. Let's <laughs> gotta bounce it free. What am I gonna do? Is I'm gonna try something here. I know we're running a little longer now, so I'm messing around with it. But we have a working working project. So I'm just gonna switch this block around, and that should be all I really gotta do. Uh, it should be not on the hotbar because I don't have the right hotbar up, so whatever. Let's put one block in here, and I'm gonna go like that. So at least it wedges in. Alright, let's try this. Okay. Ooh. I missed my landing. Alright, lift up. I'll close you. Jiggle it a little bit, I think. Yeah, these blocks have far too much friction. Definitely. Well, it does sort of work. It was just an idea, and it does some it sort of work. Same idea over at this end. This end might work a little bit better. It's hard to say because of the miners, because they're heavy, but let's see what happens. All right, actually, I should probably unlock everything first. And even though it's not the best thing in the world, I'm still going to blueprint it. I'm sure some of you can have some fun with this. Alright, and where's that hinge? There's that hinge. Okay, there's that one, and this one. Get my feet back on solid ground. Or at least something that's <laughs> somewhat solid. Alright, uh, let's see. Okay, that. Uh, again, we'll probably have to bounce it a little bit to get it to open up. Hmm. I think I got my wiring wrong on this one. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's not what I want. I want to turn it on. Uh, it's one of those hover pads that's supposed to be powered at all times. That one right there. We bring a build vision, we'll grab the red switchboard. So that's what was going on, is it had no power to actually open it. Oh, I actually turned it off. Don't know how I did that. Okay, let's try this again. And we'll end it up here pretty quick. Because the lag's a bit much. Okay, that's off. Yeah, this one, does, there we go. I think it's just because the miners are so heavy. Let me see, we barely lift it up. I might have to throw another air blade on this one. But same idea on this. We hit the button, drop her down. Now I'll do our mining for us. We bring it back up. And we try to lock it in place. Try to lock it in place. Didn't quite make it. But there, that is that. That is a uh, fairly working base. Uh, it's not exactly the most level thing in the world, but it does work. And it has been quite the project. And at least I'm glad I have some results to show for it. But anyways, I'm going to call this one here. I'm going to try to get this back up in place here and get blueprinted up on the workshop for you guys. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.